You're watching ABC 7 News at 4, starting with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon. A little warmer today. Temperatures into the mid 80s, slightly above average, uh, but the humidity is still very comfortable at this time. Great weather for the beaches. This is from Holmes Beach at uh, 959 this morning. You can see uh, just some pretty calm waves out there and lots of sunshine. Lots of beachgoers too, indicating uh, no harmful impacts of that red tide. We had a pretty good east wind throughout the day as well. And as far as the forecast goes, those winds will stay out of the southeast tomorrow, and that will make that uh, second number there, 46, go up a little higher at this time tomorrow afternoon. East winds are at 9 now, and the pressure at 30.08. That's a little higher. That continues to rise. And the temperature, 85 degrees. Our normal high, 83, 82, 83 degrees. And as far as the Titan radar picture goes, no rain around here. Some showers off of Key West and there is a developing storm system over the central U.S. That central U.S. storm system now making its way through Kansas and Oklahoma and Colorado uh, will eventually swing a cold front our way, which will bring us a real good threat uh, for some showers and even some thunderstorms. But right now, high pressure is dominating our weather with fair skies over the southeast. Temperatures 85 in Sarasota. It's 83 in Orlando, 82 in Miami and 84 in Key West and around town. Temperatures all into the mid 80s with the exception of beach areas. Cortez now at 80 and the Gulf water temperature now at 79. We'll also take a look a little bit later at uh, the tropics. Uh, right now, Arcadia at 83, 83 in Wachula. Uh, inland areas are looking pretty good. You can see high pressure dominating. Here comes the front. The front will eventually be coming down and bring us a chance for showers. We'll talk more about the timing of that front coming up in just a few minutes. Jacqueline Scott. All right, Bob, thank you. Now to our top story, an update on the breaking news out of Venice this morning where four bike riders were hit by a car. It all happened at around 830 at the intersection of Center Road and Rockley Boulevard. ABC 7's Rebecca Fernandez joins us live now from the scene with the latest on that investigation. Rebecca, what can you tell us this afternoon? Well, Jacqueline Scott officials were here all day looking at all the evidence and trying to figure out exactly what happened. But they say it's still too early in the investigation to give us definite answers. But it was a very hard scene to look at. All four bikes were scattered across Center Road in pieces, and the Florida Highway Patrol tells us they do know that the bicyclists were riding in the outer bike lane, but were switching over to the left lane when they were hit. The driver of that car was a 92-year-old woman from Venice. It is not illegal to ride bikes in the road, even when there are sidewalks, so the fault of this accident is still being determined. Three of the bicyclists were airlifted and one was taken by ambulance, but they are all in critical condition at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And tonight at 6, I'll give you more on the information of what officials are telling us they know so far, plus what bike riders from the area have to say about this tragedy. For now, live in Venice, Rebecca Fernandez, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Back to you guys. All right, Rebecca, thank you. The Florida Highway Patrol also investigating a separate fatal crash in Venice. Troopers say 30 year old Robert Sealand was heading north on Venice East Boulevard around 315 this morning. When he got near Woodrose Way, troopers say he drove onto the median and hit two wooden posts. He then hit some trees, crossed over to the other side of the road and crashed into a large oak tree. Sealand died at the scene. Troopers say he was not wearing a seatbelt. A Hardy County man is charged with DUI manslaughter after troopers say he caused a fatal crash in Mayaca City. It happened, happened late last night along State Road 64. Troopers say 21-year-old Brandon Blaylock was heading east on 64 when he lost control on a curve and crashed head-on to a pickup truck driven by 30-year-old Dustin Horn of Bradenton. Horn was not wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the truck as it overturned and died at the scene. Blaylock now faces several DUI-related charges. Horn uh, again died at the scene. Jacqueline joins us now with President Trump's visit to Pittsburgh this afternoon. Scott, President Trump invited congressional leadership on both sides of the aisle to join him today as they visit a grieving Pittsburgh where funerals for slain congregants at the Tree of Life Synagogue are now being held. Omar Jimenez has more from Pittsburgh. President Trump visiting a grieving community in Pittsburgh Tuesday. The same day, funerals begin for the 11 victims of Saturday's massacre at the Tree of Life Synagogue. Among those being laid to rest, brothers Cecil and David Rosenthal and Dr. Jerry Rabinowitz. They were the sweetest, most wonderful people you could know, not a, an ounce of hate in them whatsoever. While the community mourns unimaginable loss, some are criticizing the timing of the president's visit. Please, please, if it's not too late, put it off a week. 
any president that would come in, any president would be a distraction. Pittsburgh's mayor believes Trump should wait until after the funerals so the focus can be on the victims and their loved ones. Our focus as a city will be on the families and the outreach that they'll need this week and the support that they'll need to get through it. Uh, once we get past that, then I think there's the opportunity for um, presidential visit visits. Community leaders urging everyone, regardless of how they feel about the president's visit, to focus on inclusion. I turn to all of our elected leaders because hate doesn't know a political party. Hate is not blue, hate is not red, hate is not purple. Hate is in all. The White House also invited top congressional officials to accompany President Trump, but all have declined. The president, along with First Lady Melania Trump, Jared Kushner, and Ivanka Trump, will be visiting a hospital where some of the wounded are still recovering. In Pittsburgh, I'm Omar Jimenez. Well, since that tragedy in Pittsburgh, Sarasota police have heightened security at all places of worship across the city. And SPD's partners, including the Sheriff's Office and the FBI, are all working around the clock to make sure all of these religious institutions are safe. Every time there's services in our community, Sarasota police are out patrolling those areas. And at special events, there are also extra officers on duty monitoring. Officers now meet quarterly with clergy to keep updating and improving plans. We have hundreds of law enforcement partners, both regionally, locally, and at the federal level, that are working 24-7 to make sure that our houses of worship are safe. Sarasota Police also provided security for last night's vigil to honor the victims in Pittsburgh. They say everything went smoothly and there were no issues. Meanwhile, tonight a church in Venice is planning to hold a similar community vigil. The Venice Interfaith Community Association is hosting the event in support of the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. It will be held at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Venice on Pinebrook Road from 7 to 8 o'clock tonight and all are welcome. President Donald Trump says he is looking to make a drastic change to a constitutional right. Trump said in an interview that he plans to sign an executive order ending birthright citizen citizenship for children of non-citizens and unauthorized immigrants born on U.S. soil. That interview is a part of a series on HBO. Take a listen. It was always told to me that you needed a constitutional amendment. Right. Guess what? Amendment. You don't. You don't. Number one. Number one, you don't need that. Number two, I mean, that's in dispute. You could definitely that's very much in dispute. Well, you can definitely do it with an act of Congress, but now they're saying I can do it just with an executive order. Now, how ridiculous. We're the only country in the world where a person comes in, has a baby, and the baby is essentially a citizen of the United States for 85 years with all of those benefits. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it has to end. It's not clear if the president has the authority to strip citizenship of those born in the U.S. with an executive order. This move would spark a legal battle over executive authority, potentially ending at the Supreme Court. Let's send it back to Scott now, who joins us with more on Amendment 13 and what it could mean for greyhound racing across the state of Florida. Scott. Well, Jacqueline, Florida voters are being asked this year to settle a long-running dispute that could result in the elimination of greyhound racing in Florida. Among a long list of proposed constitutional amendments is a measure that, if passed, would end racing at dog tracks by the end of 2020. The measure is opposed by the Florida Greyhound Association, which represents owners and breeders in the racing industry. But supporters of the plan, including Cape McFall with the Humane Society of the United States, call the concerns a scare tactic. The opposition, they're out of, out of talking points because we know dogs are dying and they're in harm's way and the humane community has won the debate on, on the humane treatment of animals. So they're just desperate, it seems. Florida is one of only a handful of states that still have dog racing, and passage of the amendment would be a serious blow for an industry that has been in the state for decades. Manatee County Area Transit will offer free fixed route bus service on Election Day. That's next Tuesday, November 6th. The offer includes the MCAT Route 99 buses that travel into Sarasota County. Handy bus clients can ride free if traveling to or from a designated polling location. Also, Uber or Lyft are also offering free or and discounted rides to polling places as well. Still to come, the smell of red tide's return has some beachgoers feeling the effects once again. And then the thriller season has begun. Zombies of all ages and abilities are performing the iconic dance during a world event. 
candy corn Tootsie Rolls, no matter what candy you, that you don't like while trick-or-treating, well, Reese's has come up with a clever way to exchange it. The website selling medication may look professional and legitimate, but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. This fall, experience golf at a higher level where the courses are exceptionally beautiful and incredibly challenging on Alabama's Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Enjoy unlimited golf, including cart and range balls from 112 a day. Beautiful, deadly, irresistible. Is your game ready for the trail? Call 800-949-4444 or visit rtjgolf.com for tee times and get your game on the trail. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Persistent winds out of the east gave us a much needed break from red tide, but beachgoers are once again seeing and feeling the symptoms of the toxic algae in some areas. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live from Coquina Beach to share why the conditions are fluctuating. Erica? Scott, good evening. Red tide moves through the water in patches, and here on Coquina Beach, yesterday beachgoers were dealing with respiratory irritation. Now, when I arrived here a couple of hours ago, this area of the beach was filled with about a dozen people, and the ones I spoke with say they really didn't have any complaints. Mohori Lab scientists say the effects of red tide depend on bloom concentration, currents, and wind direction. But those factors are constantly changing, making it hard to predict conditions beyond the next few days. We spoke with a scientist today who compared the challenge of forecasting red tide to the difficulty of projecting a hurricane weeks in advance. Now, coming up tonight on ABC 7 News at 6, we'll share how visitors who are planning a trip to the Sun Coast and how far in advance they can expect to get accurate red tide readings. Reporting live on Coquina Beach, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Sun Coast News. All right, Erica, thank you so much. Let's get to Jacqueline now in the newsroom for a we'll look at what's trending today. Scott, just in time for Halloween, zombies thrilling themselves and everyone else at a world dancing event in Michael Jackson's honor at Neverland Ranch. Take a look. <laughs> They look like they're having a great time. Upwards of 100 people doing Jackson's iconic thriller moves. That event was hosted by World Dance for Humanity, a nonprofit that actually offers dance classes and brings aid to genocide survivors in Rwanda and at-risk children in the community. 
This is the eighth year World Dance hosted the event. Both children and adults showed off their dance moves and enjoyed that Halloween themed event. Well, this will crack any heart's tough shell. USA Olympic track and field star David Verberg sprinted into action to save a turtle from being mowed over by traffic here in Florida. Verberg says he almost hit the tortoise himself, so that's when he pulled over and ran across the road, scooping up that turtle and running it to safety all captured on camera. As you can see there, Verberg says he sticks his neck out for turtles whenever he sees one. Rapper Kanye West recently made headlines during a trip to the White House, but now he's sitting outside of a house in Ohio transformed into a giant pumpkin. An Ohio woman has created a monstrous pumpkin for her front porch in the likeness of that rapper. Jeanette Paris unveiled a pumpkin creation, or she unveils a pumpkin creation actually every year. This year it weighs a whopping 315 pounds. She says the most difficult part of that pumpkin was the gigantic red Make Pumpkins Great Again hat that she had to make. Well, let's send it back to Scott with a look at today's consumer news. Scott. Jacqueline Reese's is letting some people trade in their unwanted Halloween candy for peanut butter cups. Starting tomorrow afternoon in New York City, a Reese's candy converter will be set up on Fifth Avenue. The machine will take unwanted candy and swap it for Reese's peanut butter cups. That's it, that's all you can get. The company says the machine will exchange up to 10,000 cups for five hours. All right, let's get to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with our first alert forecast. You like those Reese's peanut butter cups? Bob? I do, I do. I'd like to exchange some of mine. In fact, there's a couple of candy bars I won't mention. But uh, in anyway, uh, we're looking at the forecast wind. Uh, Erica was talking about the wind direction, and uh, that's fairly easy to predict uh, out a few days. We're going to see east winds uh, continuing throughout Wednesday. And now notice Wednesday, a little bit more south, a southeasterly component in some areas. And that means the humidity coming back up a little bit, especially on Thursday, too. And then by late Thursday, they become more southwesterly, and that indeed could bring some of the harmful impacts of that red tide back on shore. The winds will also pick up in intensity in advance of a cold front. Another cold front due to arrive on Friday, and this one is going to cool things down a little bit. It'll bring us a little bit better chance for some rainfall, but no rain today and no rain expected for Halloween. So all the trick-or-treaters won't be getting wet, but they may be getting a little bit moist as a result of the higher humidity and it will be a little muggier beginning tomorrow as those winds do veer around more to a southeasterly direction. But beautiful conditions out there on the waters today. Uh, weather headlines, warmer and muggy uh, conditions for Halloween. Showers for Friday, uh, cooler for the weekend. Uh, we will see some temperatures back down into the lower 60s, it looks like. So not as cool as last weekend, but nonetheless, it will be a little bit cooler. This front, the impacts of the front won't stick around all that long either. The front is going to move back northward as a warm front on Sunday afternoon, bringing with it another chance for a few showers. But the hourly planner tomorrow uh, looking spectacular. Temperatures into the mid 80s by the afternoon and staying there. Uh, by the time uh, the kids get out there around 6 o'clock or so, temperatures will be in the low 80s. Should be falling into the uh, mid 70s by, say, 8 o'clock or so. Tighten radar picture not depicting any rainfall around. That's the result of a high pressure ridge, which is really at the surface and in the upper levels of the atmosphere. This high pressure ridge will get bumped off to the east and southeast. That's the reason why we're going to start to see more of a southeasterly wind component, which will uh, bring up that dew point a little bit. And it looks as though we will see mild conditions overnight. There may be a patchy, some patchy fog forming as a result of the dew point temperature getting a little higher. You can see the high level dryness that's been around slowly is sinking southward now and a little bit of moisture will start to pop back into play, especially late Thursday and into Friday. That means a chance for showers uh, will be with us on Friday and maybe lingering even into Saturday morning. Most of it should be out of here uh, by 11 o'clock on Saturday, though, in the uh, morning. Temperatures will be uh, right around 70 degrees at 11 o'clock tonight. As far as the GFS forecast model goes, there's the high pressure ridge, that large circle that you see there that slips off to the east. Here comes the approaching front. Things start to moisten up a bit out ahead of the front. Showers start to move in on Friday afternoon and uh, could see an isolated thunderstorm. The clouds will stick around a little bit on Saturday, but not bad. We'll see partly cloudy skies and then watch this front. We'll start to move back northward as a warm front. A few showers expected on Sunday as that system kind of tears off to the northeast and another low uh, develops behind it. So that's what we've got going on uh, for the next several days. For boaters tomorrow, looks uh, pretty typical. East winds at 10 knots. Seas will be right around 2 feet with a light chop in the bays and inland waters. The extended forecast then calling for delightful weather tomorrow. Uh, we'll look for some sunshine, just a few clouds around, maybe a little bit more cloudiness on Thursday. High temperature 86 
and lows getting warmer every night. Uh, you'll see a 70% chance for showers mainly on Friday, and it looks like a lingering into Saturday, and then we'll see some clearing on Saturday afternoon. Should not be uh, that wet. As, as I said, the showers will be over by 11 o'clock, and then we'll have that uh, extra hour. Make sure you fall back one hour. It hasn't been approved yet. We still have to go with the time change. Well, be sure to download our ABC7 weather app. And that is the first alert weather app. It's a very valuable tool that will be coming handy uh, for you as it has been all hurricane season. And it looks as though we will see uh, again the potential for some strong storms, not with this front, but with fronts that come down uh, mainly in January and February is our toughest months here as far as that goes. OK, well, Bob, they're seeing in Italy some of the worst flooding they've had in uh, more than a decade there. Heavy rain and high tides caused flooding in almost 80 percent of Venice, Italy. Nine people have died in different parts of the country. Tourists and residents trudged through waist high water in some areas, while shops and restaurants were inundated as barriers placed across doorways failed to hold back the rising tide. Yeah, and get this runners in Sunday's Venice Marathon were uh, undeter undeterred as they splashed their way through ankle deep water. Other parts of Italy have been affected as well. Rome issued an adverse weather alert warning of widespread rainfall, strong winds, and violent storms in exposed coastal areas. Wow. Bob, thank you. Still to come, we'll tell you about a New York couple with a passion for pumpkins and how they turn them into art. I'm Linda Carson from Suncoast View. Coming up Wednesday morning live at 9, no bones about it. Skeletons will be on the march tomorrow night. A chiropractor shows us how to keep our own bones healthy. We'll have a Halloween costume parade, make Halloween crafts with Maker's Market, and Chef Lindsay from the Ritz haunts our kitchen. That's all coming up Wednesday morning live at 9. Hi, I'm Chef Allen, and watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7 where we'll be serving up our most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix to sample, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Honda, I like it. Your last chance for 2018 Honda Accords on sale is now during our model year in sale. Drive new Accords for just $249 a month. Get an Accord, the North American car of the year, for less than a competition. With more standard features than Camry, Honda Sensing, multi-angle camera, turbocharged engine, and more. New Accords, just $249 a month. Your last chance for Accords all on sale this week at your local Honda dealer. Know your prey. What are we doing? Saturdays at 5:30 and Sundays at 2 on the ABC7 live stream. America was built on a love for the outdoors. We are a nation of sportsmen blessed with magnificent natural resources. With broad interests across water and field, we are united in our devotion to nature and conservation. Join us every week for the best shows celebrating the outdoor lifestyle. Outdoor America, live free. This weekend on the ABC7 live stream. A home can be much more than just a house, but for some of our neighbors, Home means uncertainty and isolation. At Rebuilding Together, we turn houses into homes and revitalize our communities because a neighborhood is more than just houses and streets. It's familiar faces and open arms. Join the movement to ensure everyone can live in a safe home and community. Become a Rebuilder today. This Southern weekend, we're making memories on the Mississippi River. We'll taste the secret spices at a beloved seafood market. It's enough to make my lips tingle. We'll hunt for treasure in a store full of surprises. It just keeps going and going. And we'll show you where to explore a swamp without leaving the city. So come join the adventure as we explore Baton Rouge, Louisiana on the next Southern Weekend. Sunday at 5 on ABC7. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. 
Tom and Sharon Swain gear up for Halloween a couple of months early with a crop of giant pumpkins. Tom grows them and then Sharon carves them into works of art. The couple live outside of Rochester, New York and started the tradition 32 years ago. Each year it starts in May. Tom says the secret is in the seed. They're called North Atlantic Giants and I've been crossing seeds and uh, trading seeds with other growers actually around the world to come up with what I hope will be the, the prettiest giant pumpkin ever grown. A lot of the giant pumpkins are kind of yellowish and he tries to cross them to get them really orange. Their yard's beautiful too, isn't it? By October, the pumpkins are ready for Sharon's incredible carving skills. This year's theme is children's movies. The Swains pride themselves on providing a free fall activity. All right, let's get back to Jacqueline in the newsroom for a look at some of the other stories we're working on for you tonight. Scott, the home of the Baltimore Orioles needs millions of dollars in repairs to keep up with MLB standards. Coming up tonight at 5, we'll hear about the controversy surrounding where these funds are coming from and how much money is actually needed. And at 6, after an intense six months, the inaugural e-sailing world championship season will come to an end today in Sarasota. And at 7, Republican Will Robinson and Democrat Tracy Pratt both square off for House District 71. Let's send it back to Bob for a final look at our forecast this 4 o'clock hour. Bob. Good afternoon, everyone. Mostly uh, fair skies this evening for your beach walk and uh, winds will be out of the northeast at 5 to 10. There may be a little west breeze where you are and along the beaches there. Skies will be generally fair and uh, sunset uh, coming in at 649. Remember that sunset will be changing Next Sunday, as uh, the uh, time change, we fall back an hour and uh, the, the, the time won't be changing, but the uh, obviously the, the time of the day will be changing. 85 degrees. Uh, we are looking at uh, clear skies right now, quite comfortable out there and the humidity at 46%. We have an east wind at nine, the pressure 30.08 and the dew point now at 62 degrees. The Van Wazel webcam showing pretty calm conditions out there for boaters and sailors alike. Just a few fair weather cumulus clouds going by overhead and it looks like it'll stay that way too. We'll see clear skies overnight and a little bit of patchy fog forming. Uh, temperatures will be on the warmer side. We'll have much more on this coming up at uh, 5 o'clock. Scott, back to you. Thank you, Bob, and we invite you back at 5 o'clock. Hope to see you then.